In today's lecture, we'll be talking about the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, also referred to as ELISA. Now, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay is a laboratory technique that can be used to detect and also quantify specific molecules. And these molecules include antigens, antibodies, hormones, proteins, and peptides. There are two keywords to detect and quantify. So, to detect simply means to determine the presence or absence of a, a specific molecule. And so it can also be referred to as qualitative analysis. Whereas quantify means if this molecule is present, how much of it is available? And that can be referred to as quantitative analysis. That is to say, ELISA can be used for qualitative and quantitative analysis of specific molecules in biological fluids and tissues. Now, ELISA takes place in micro titer plates, micro titer plates, or micro titer wells. which can also be referred to as micro plate wells. So the ELISA test kit consists of about 96 wells. So the test kit is something like this. It's in this form. And then there are wells. So the ELISA technique takes place in each of these wells. So let's bring out this well to be something like this. So let's assume this is one of the wells. This represents one of the wells. So the ELISA technique is performed in each of these wells. So let's assume the well we have been able to isolate happens to be this. The ELISA technique combines the mechanism or the principle of enzymology and immunology. As the name implies, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. So the immuno there represents immunology and the enzyme there represents enzymology. So it combines the mechanism or the principles of enzymology and immunology. Also, ELISA technique mainly or basically makes use of the principle of antigen antibody interaction. So, for this technique to be performed, there must be an antigen antibody interaction. It is more like the immune system that, on recognition of a foreign substance, which is an antigen, the antigen elicits or triggers the production of antibodies. And these antibodies, you know, engulf or bind to these antigens to form the antigen antibody complex. So ELISA also works on the principle of antigen antibody reaction. So let's say this is our antigen bound to our antibody. So let's say this is the antibody and then this is the antigen. These are the FC regions. That bind to the antigen molecule. Now, as the name implies, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. That is to say, an enzyme must be linked. So this antigen-antibody complex must be linked to an enzyme. But then, 
the portion of this complex that must be linked to the enzyme is the antibody. So the portion of this complex that must be linked to the enzyme is the antibody. So there must be a linkage of an enzyme. We understand that the presence of an enzyme stimulates or catalyzes reaction. But before such reaction occurs, there must be a substrate which it can act on or which it can bind to specifically or with high level of specificity and then convert that substrate to product. For this enzyme to be functional, there must be the presence of each specific substrate. So each enzyme has each specific substrate that it must bind to and convert to product. So there are several enzymes that can be used in ELISA that can be linked to this antibody. These enzymes include osradish peroxidase, alkaline phosphatase, and beta galactosidase. These are enzymes that can be linked. Either of these ones can be linked to the antibody that is already bound to the antigen. And then because there must be the presence of each specific substrate, let's assume the enzyme that is linked is osradish peroxidase. The specific substrate for osradish peroxidase is TMB. Now, TMB simply means 3, 3 prime, 5, 5 prime, trimethyl benzidine. Trimethyl benzidine, TMB. So, this is a specific chromogenic substrate for osradish peroxidase. So, if osradish peroxidase is the enzyme that is linked or conjugated to this antibody, then this substrate must be added plus plus substrate in this case what tmb and that will lead to what product because all this process takes place inside of this well we will have a solution inside of this well so the formation of a product must be revealed in form of color change. So there must be a visible color change in the micro well. And this color change indicates the presence of that specific molecule that is being assayed for. If there is no color change, it indicates that that specific molecule that is being assayed for, it's not there. But once there is a color change, it indicates the presence of that specific molecule that is being assayed for. That is to say, the enzyme cannot convert this substrate to product if this antigen is not there. Let's assume we want to determine the presence of an antigen. Okay, so we are looking, we are, we are trying to detect and quantify an antigen. So if this antibody does not bind to any antigen, it, of course it will still bind to the enzyme, the substrate will be added, but there will be no product because of the absence of this, this antigen. So the product can only be produced or formed when the antigen is bound to antibody, which is in turn conjugated to the enzyme and then the enzyme will catalyze the substrate to form the product. And the product appears in form of what? A color change. So the presence of a color change indicates the presence of that molecule or that substance that is being assayed for. The next thing is to measure the absorbance of the color solution. Because the presence of the color solution has indicated that this substance is there. So the next thing is to know how much of this substance, which is quantitative analysis. And to know how much of this substance or this molecule that is present in the solution or in the sample, the absorbance of the color solution must be determined using micro tata reader or spectrophotometer. 
micro titer reader or spectrophotometer after the absorbance is obtained the absorbance will help to determine how much or the concentration of the molecule and of course the more intense the color the higher the absorbance and the less intense the color the lesser the absorbance and this also obeys via Lambert's law which talks about the absorbance of a solution being directly proportional to its concentration so the more intense the color solution the higher its absorbance and then the higher its concentration so there are different types of the ELISA method or ELISA technique. We have the direct ELISA, we have the indirect ELISA, we have the sandwich ELISA, and we have the competitive ELISA. So the direct ELISA is used to detect and quantify antigens, while the indirect ELISA is used to detect and quantify antibodies. Also, the sandwich ELISA is used to detect antigens. And finally, the competitive ELISA is used to detect antigens and antibodies. So in my subsequent classes, I will handle each of these types of ELISA holistically and more explicitly.